Hello everyone. Welcome to this video session on Bama's Karakku explanations of the chapter 2. This video is part of the discussion of the paper Compulsory Foundation course in English for the fourth semester BCA and BSc at Mangalore University. In the paper, we are studying the unit A, Bama's Karakku. So, prior to this video, I made three videos which precede the discussion of chapter 1. In the first video, we went to the description of Bama's village, the geographical features and its beauty by the description of the ponds in the village, mountains and the people of that locality. In the next video, we went to furthermore, uh, you know, details about some unique features including the Muniandi shrine and we have we were introduced to Bondan Mama a character and then in the third one we were we introduced to further details the unique features of her uh, village that is with uh, the discussion of a uh, person named Kaman story and then uh, Nalatangal story by choosing all these individual instance instances Bama is trying to give a very uh, representation of her village and uh, the community life of her people through the first chapter. And now let's move on to chapter 2 that further elaborates uh, the theme of Bama's writing in Karakku. So she opens the second chapter with the description of her life during the school days. She mentions an incident that happened during her school days when she was walking home from school. But the narration is interesting that it is effectively catches the every things, uh, the, the, the details that she used to notice. She opens, she says here, by the third standard, she had seen and felt and experienced and uh, was part of the humili humi humiliation created by, uh, given, given by untouchability or the practice of untouchability. Though she saw that at such an early age, but she did not see anyone speaking against it or opposing it outwardly. You know that the Indian constitution, part third of Indian constitution, uh, right to equality, article number 14 to 18, under article 17, abolishes untouch untouchability, the practice of untouchable untouchability in any way. So though the laws are there to prohibit this, but they are not implemented properly. So we see the practice of untouchability in Bama as a writer recounts that her childhood experience and presents it here in a, a questioning manner. She says, incident of walking home from uh, her school, she mentions that with an old bag on her shoulder, watching the entertaining novelties and oddities. Yeah, I would like to draw your attention to her childhood, how curious it was. She had very variety of entertaining novelties and oddities that she mentions in page number 13 of OUP um, publication of Karaku. I would like to read out, I quote, uh, the performing monkey, the snake which the snake charmer kept in its box and displayed from time to time, the cyclist who had not got off his bike for three days and who kept pedaling as hard as he could from break of day. The rupee notes that were pinned onto his shirt to spur him on, the merry-go-rounds and giant wheels, the Marietta temple, the huge bell hanging there, the pongal offerings being cooked in front of the temple, the dried fish stall by the st statue of Gandhi, the sweet stall, the stall selling fried snacks, and all other shops next to each other the street light always demonstrating how it could change from blue to violet. The Narikuravan hunter, Gypsy, with his wild lamour in cages, selling needles, clay beads and instruments for cleaning out the ears. Oh, I could go on and on. Each thing would pull me to a standstill and not to allow me to go any further. Look at the way I the rich childhood uh, experience she underwent. Just imagine the condition of today, dear students. Many students who 
had who had been uh, probably who have been in uh, within the four walls for the last two three years due to pandemic. That means they are on on a way on on the one hand you can see they are de uh, deprived of this lively experience they can get exposed to, and of course we observe in metropolitan cities or even. um very thickly populated uh, town settlements it they get hardly uh, get exposure to these things of course they travel via some uh, a school bus or something but nevertheless there are instances which can fill uh, uh, you know experience which can add to childhood experience and it can blossom it can foster a kind of dreaming among children bama had that kind of childhood that's what she recounts here and uh, writes effectively at times you see politicians haran right they they sometimes haran right have the haran in the sense they make lot of forceful lengthy speech sometimes a street play sometimes a puppet show and no magic no miracle stunt so variety of things were offered to her in her childhood and that's how the experience of life became rich to her then even otherwise adil de hodru even otherwise the waiter cooling the coffee lifting the tumbler high up and pouring into the other at the coffee clubs in the bazaar this is another thing you see the way they do and that's a kind of uh, uh, a, you know a kind of skill that they possess and people chopping onions yeah they are chopping chopping cutting right chopping onions in front of shops turning ice elsewhere right they chop the onions turning ice elsewhere that you can see uh, how how they are smart in the act also they saw that they would not smart they would not smart smart here has got another meaning as a verb smart means would not hurt right avrige gaya maadkolda hage kuidkolda hage aa kelsa na maartta idru anta kuda avar observe maartare fallen fruits of the almond trees you can see also form fallen fruits of the almond trees never pronounce almond l is silent it is almond trees so by all these one thing is clear for you that bama as a child was very uh, sensible one who can perceive the things very quickly right she she has that kind of grasping power as a child otherwise she wouldn't have recollected all these so effectively and beautifully through the novel so she finally says all these sights tether my legs stop me from going home just like an elephant which is tethered right tied with a rope and it cannot move similarly her life she was not allowed to move further when these things were very interesting and catchy to her in her childhood selling seasonal foods like mango cucumber sweet paniyaram payasam halwa tamarind seeds iced lollies and variety of things were sold again now we have uh oh, gazing at all this looking at keenly at them she crossed the street of the pallas and came her to her street and the street of the parayas now she is coming to an incident so initially she mentioned what things which could uh, make life attractive in her childhood right there are darker side of course there are bitter incidents but there are rich things which can fill her life and what molded a writer in bama is evident here what mohit then so uh, she that incident that she recount, recounts here is she went to some uh, yeah when she reached the paraya street she was watching the threshing floor there threshing floor threshing the you know uh, husk and separating the grain right so the seated naikar watched her pe- her people driving the uh, uh, muzzled cattle in pairs to Uh, tread out the grain right they will tread out means separating the grain muzzled cattle right uh, yoking together right negilu nogagalanna right now katte nogavanna kattu noga anta heltare malnadnalli eradu kuttigeyanna ondondu eradu cattle anna eradu oxen galanna katti then they move round in circle and uh, by uh, by that they separate the you know grain from the uh, uh, um, the straw right the dried straw right for example paddy ಆ ರೀತಿ ಮಾಡೋದನ್ನು ನಾವು ನೋಡ್ತೇವೆ ಒಕ್ಕಲಾಟ ಅಂತ ಕರೀತಾರೆ ಮಲೆನಾಡಿನ ಭಾಗಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇವತ್ತು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೆಶಿಂಗ್ ಕೂಡ ಇದೆ ರೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೆಶಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಸಿ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದ ವೇ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇರಿಯನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಂಟ್ರಿ ಹ್ಯೂರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಬಾಮಸ್ ನರೇಷನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ 
Only one who has got the experience can bring it so effectively true. Doubled up her fun. Uh, there came an incident. It doubled up her fun. What is that incident? An elder from her street came from the bazaar carrying a small packet wrapped paper stained with oil. An elder had, was carrying a packet and it was wrapped by paper and it was oil, right? They were stained with oil. It's not a very, you know, funny incident. But what made the fun is he held the packet by string without touching it. He held the packet by a string on the coal nail without touching it. And he went up to the Niker, bowed low and extended it towards him. So he went up to the Niker. There was a the one who, who owns the land, landlord there is the Niker. He and he bowed at him, bowing at respecting him. And he handed over it to, uh, no, not handing over. He extended that uh, string to him and then the Niker opened it, began to it. He picked it and uh, he opened it and began to eat what eyes. It was what eyes, what I got, right? What eyes then. So this is the incident. What does this show? This is the example, the first exposure of Bama to the practice of untouchability. That's why she remembers it very well and she recounts and makes, a, makes an attack here. Then. She went home and told her elder brother the comic story that she had witnessed. A big man making a game out of carrying a parcel and laughed. She initially did not know these concepts, untouchability and all that. She thought it was a fun, it was a funny incident where a, an elderly man was carrying uh, some food stuff in a string at the end of the string. It, she laughed. But it was not a matter of laughter, right? It was not a thing to laugh. It, it was her brother who made her clear. He was not amused by that and he told her it was not a matter for fun. It was not for fun. But the Nikers were upper caste, so they must not, they, that is uh, the parayas, her community men, cannot touch the food that they are going to eat and cannot touch them also. That is the reason he carried it by string. Otherwise what happens? It would get polluted as they believed. And this silenced her laugh. It hurt her to feel terribly sad. A question comes, how, how this kind of, uh, you know, disparity in terms of uh, touchability or untouchability, how, did it, how does it happen? That's the question popped up in her, in her mind. She questioned it. How could a wrapped parcel in banana leaf, then parceled in paper, be polluted if a pariah held it in hand? This is the question from her. If he held it in hand, how can it become polluted? That's the question. And she also get provoked as if, uh, and she was angry to go and touch that wretched Wadai herself. Then, why should we have to fetch and uh, we have to mere take our wages and leave that? That's the decision from her, right? You can find here one uh, message to uh, her men that she says, uh, uh, why should we have to do that, right? That that is not our duty, right? We have to take the uh, you know wage and go home, right? That is our duty. Do our work and take the wage. Why we are not supposed to do these kind of errands to somebody? That is the argument from her. Then her grandmother's experience. Now she takes up another exposure of uh, you know untouchability. What her grandmother's both maternal and paternal grandmother's experienced at working at uh, Nikers. Uh, uh, you know, family. Even the little children called them by name and ordered them about uh, as they belong to the Niker caste. See, this was one thing. Uh, little children who belong to the Niker family, they called her grandfather by uh, grandmother by name. They never respected her. The grandmother would call them as Ayya, master and all that. That means she has to give respect. That was the social, uh, you know, uh, stratification and uh, uh, the way uh, rules for giving you know respect all these operated in that society she exposes that very you know um, sickness uh, in the mentality and then disquieting to watch the way the Nikan women poured out water uh, from the height of four feet and the pati that is her grandmother and others drank it with cupped hands held to their mouth see the image that they were cupping the hands to mouth and drinking water and she was powering from four feet height. It was disquieting, disquieting, unable to be quiet at all, right? Not able to be quiet, disturbing. It was very uh, annoying then. 
her other party that is the other grandmother would go to naikar's houses at dawn dawn early morning sweep out the cow shed collect up the dung and the dirt and then bring home the leftover rice and curry of the previous evening this is another incident where she recounts they were uh, treated in uh, in a very uh, oppressing or uh, a degraded way she behaved as if she received the nectar of the gods Simen, similarly she makes a criticism of uh, uh, her own people who who became part of this kind of practice right so that's why she says it was like nectar of the gods ariti avaru kuda yochane maartta idru anta kuda ond kade heludana observe maartiri so uh, then bama also realized that after a long time what party was bringing her grandmother was bringing it was actually the unwanted food of the uh, naikar's family and they were about to throw it away yeah look at the way uh, things were going on anta heli so that's why it was very bitter to recount these things for bama when with uh, so then uh, she once went with party uh, to uh, naikar's house with her grandmother to naikar's house after completing the filthy chores all the work she placed the vessel by the side of the drain yeah by there was a drain drainage drain by the side of that she placed the vessel vessel a kind of uh, uh, you know vessel steel vessel maybe or something like that patre so the naikar lady brought the leftovers leaned out in distance right she brought the leftover leaned out in distance and tipped them into party swazal this she takes up this incident again to show another practice another instance of practice of untouchability her vessel it seem must not touch parties it would be polluted this is another incident she takes up there even touching between the vessels would pollute the vessel belong to naikar's family that was a sick practice then existed uh, in that part that she is going to question later bama told party not to do it party said these people are the maharajas how can we change this that is attitude of foreign page number 16 and 17 of that book we can see party's helpless reply that we cannot change all these and other right then bama's elder brother who was studying at a university had the same kind of experience on his way back home from the library in the neighboring village there is one incident to recount here a naikar asked who he was and he was from which street and he simply replied am a paraya from cherry uh, i think cherry uh, street cherry street like uh, a slap in the face he said am a paraya from that cherry street right so what you observe here he was able to guess why was that person asked that uh, why did that person ask that uh, to to which street he belonged to because he wanted to know his caste the naikar was furious and inquired someone to know that her annan was uh, rakamas grandson yeah the naikar got furious angry and he inquired about him and came to know it was rakamas grandson next day that naikar warned her party that is the uh, grandmother of both uh, she and her brother annan and how dare your grandson talk to me so arrogantly that's the question he rose that naikar asked him so party managed saying managed it saying he is an educated lad the college boys talk like this they don't know she managed somehow but she cannot think or question why can't he talk like that that was the situation or the the social relationship existed in the society and she exposes them trace by trace through this uh, chapter a very kind of indignant resentment towards this sick practices existed in the society is evident in the part of the chapter and now again now we have one more her elder brother's experience to uh, add something more same experience he experienced at library they looked at the paraya lads from the kerry a slum slide is known as kerry shady street uh, with uh, contempt they also hated them once annan added ma after his name he added ma master of arts while signing out his books the attendant brought him a stool to sit on and addressed him sir what does mean when he showed that he is an educated man then there came the respects then there came the chair then there came the seat so that means you observe on the one hand if an education if 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 somebody is an educated man then it is possible to find some respect right then it is possible to probably uh, avoid uh, you know somewhat uh, reduce these kind of uh, 
you know inequalities in society but education itself is mirage or itself is a uh, what we say kannade olagina gantu antarala a kind of uh, uh, thing which is not possible to access for many uh, those who are still under that kind kind of condition and then told bama that because they are the parayas in jati they never given any honor or dignity or respect jati means caste right so they were never given respect because they belong to that caste the parayas so but one important line that bama mentions here that line, that line is but if we study it begins in page number 18 i'd like to read out that line you see if we study and make progress we can throw away these indignities so study with care learn all you can if you are always ahead in your lessons people will come to you of their own accord and attach themselves to you work hard and learn what a message for uh, bama yeah she even mentioned somewhere in the preface again uh, somewhere in the next chapter in the following chapters that these words made deep impression on bama it actually catapulted accelerated her uh, life towards further excel you know success or study she studied hard and stood first in the class and this naturally bring uh, brought her many friends many befriended her uh, though she is a uh, parachi right what she say in tamil the one who is not uh, possible to they don't they, they, they don't touch her they don't talk to her but still they accepted her right thus we observe bama particularly in this chapter takes up the incidents which led to the uh, you know which she witnessed uh, uh, in her life that support the concept of untouchability and questions that practice of untouchability so she exposes the practice of untouchability through this chapter and she questions that caste based discrimination is prevalent in her village uh, it is evident through the description of her experience her grandmother's experience and also she brings in her elder brother's experience to support that taking individual instances individual incidents where those things are there she constructs the theme where there is the you know practice of untouchable untouchability and discrimination caste based discrimination and puts a rational question over it she questions that caste based ill treatment meted out to the lower caste by the upper caste through these incidences and she questions that very ill, ill treatment of the parayas by the naikar community also that's how the novel gradually takes up its mission of giving some kind of dalit identity also questioning the uh, you know ill treatment of dalits ill treatment of her community people in that village she takes up several individual instances to support that and makes or puts forth her argument thank you for watching see you in the next video continued part of the second chapter